Hey, welcome back to the Money Shift Podcast. I'm Alexander, aka Rex, and today I am talking with Ilya from the Motorverse and Tiago from Gravitas Labs uh, about how they are bringing the legendary Lamborghini brand on chain. Uh, so on Thursday, November 7th, uh, in just a few days, Lamborghini and the Motorverse are launching their interoperable Revuelto digital vehicles. Uh, and this is going to be part of the multifaceted fast four world platform that offers exclusive experiences for car lovers online, on chain and IRL. So I want to welcome uh, Ilya and Tiago to the podcast. What's up, guys? Hello, hello. Hey, hey. Well, thanks for joining. Um, I guess great to be let's here. go ahead and uh, kick things off uh, by maybe um, telling us just a little bit of like a high level overview about what uh, Lamborghini is doing um, and uh, you know what you guys are both doing as far as uh, the Motorverse and Gravitas Labs to help bring them on chain. Yeah, so I can kick things off um, for the Motorverse part and then hand over to Tiago to tell more about the backstory with Lambo. Uh, so I I'm sure uh, Rex, like most of your followers, probably already quite familiar with Motorverse. Just to recap, uh, so we're building the largest open ecosystem for uh, digital vehicles, um, racing games, and motorsport culture uh, in Web3 and hopefully beyond. Um, you know, when Web3 gets mass adoption finally. Um, but there are obviously a lot of cool stuff that uh, we can bring from. Uh, real world to on-chain and on-chain to real world uh, without, you know, people actually realizing it's Web3 technology. Uh, so we can talk about uh, that uh, more. Um, and to just break it down a bit further. Uh, we have a official sponsorship with MotoGP, so we want to see bikes. starting with the cars because they're the biggest category. Um, and all right. uh, and so what it means is that like we... No. Looks like we're getting some connection issues with you, Ilya. Um, sorry, just not to interrupt mm -hmm. you, but uh, just want to make sure that nobody no, misses no any details. Uh, it's like it's coming back. It goes in and out, but uh... okay. Yeah, we can. We okay, can I'll keep, keep going. Right. Yeah, yeah. So what it means is, uh, so we want to bring officially licensed cars uh, and you know digital twins uh, to to the virtual world. Directly, right? Uh, with Um, and so Lamborghini is the first partner that we're bringing you know, to Motorverse uh, for interoperable cars. And Revelto will be the first. Studios. Both of those cars in their games as well. Um, and of course, you know, we're bringing all the goodness from the motorsport world, from the IRL. So utilities from the real world. And so all of that is obviously sitting in the middle of the economy. Um, and that's kind of the vision, right? So we want to be kind of that entry point for auto like automotive brands to come to Web3. Um, and so this is probably a good segue to, you know, the backstory with Lamborghini. And uh, uh, Tiago has been in the middle of it for the past more than a year, I believe. Yeah, so I can jump here and, and give this backstory. Um, I think some of the, the points that Celia already mentioned uh, cover like to to give like a glimpse of how this all happened with Lamborghini and what are the plans for the future. 
So basically, like from Grafter's lab side, we have been um, in those discussions with Lamborghini for uh, more than a year, actually, like uh, analyzing their objectives, like in the long term, uh, understanding how we could use um, Web3 not as an end, but as a mean, like to help them to to um, achieve the objectives, like the business objectives. Uh, so those discussions started more than one year ago, and we were deciding like how to create the next phase uh, for digital engagement uh, for Lamborghini brand. Um, and this all uh, ended up like with this concept of fast forward. Um, so fast forward is the central hub uh, for Lamborghini for Lamborghini brands like regarding all digital uh, experiences. We're starting with. Uh, of course, we're starting with the interoperable cars, uh, which is a, a no-brainer, right? Uh, and using uh, blockchain technologies to do so. Um, but uh, the long-term vision is, again, like to use blockchain, to use uh, Web3, and to use gaming concepts uh, to create like these further experiences, uh, making sure that we are delivering uh, a new, new channel for loyalty uh, for fans, but also a new way for fans to experience Lamborghini as a brand. Um, so uh, fast forward, uh, it's starting with a 3D wallet, uh, which is going live uh, on Thursday together with the first uh, Mint. Um, so this true 3D wallet, we also evolved to an immersive experience where you have like the digital version from Lamborghini Museum uh, with a specific, um, specific uh experiences there like with concept that has never been showed before um and this is only like the the digital layer of what we're bringing with fast forward right um so just focusing on the drop like uh the first drop this one is happening on thursday uh it will unlock not only the interoperable cars but also what we are calling as a genesis capsule which is basically the passport for people to join fast forward, like this digital hub from Lamborghini. Um, so this includes also like different other benefits as we are showing here. Um, we're talking about, um, of course, like the engagement uh, for points and rewards. So based on your engagement in this platform, we will start to earn some points and this would be uh, exchanged for uh, different uh, digital assets or also real life experiences. Um, so for example, um, you have one car, the digital Revolto, you have your Genesis capsule that unlock asset access to the immersive experience. In the immersive experience, you can complete some quests and also uh, earn uh, new digital assets that are exclusive to this experience. So this is part of the digital rewards, but we are also talking about in real life rewards. So for example, for Lamborghini has the Super Trofeo series. Um, actually, they're ending like this season uh, next week for this year. But starting from next next year, um, all the races uh, that they will have across the world uh, will have a specific VIP tickets for members of Fast Forward community to be part of nice. this this really nice experience. So you can imagine like members of the community by being part of it based on the engagement. They weren't tickets to be there, like in the Super Trophy race, but also to have a hot lap in their cir the circuit, this kind of thing. So, um, again, like it starts with digital engagement, but it's more like, again, to bring a new layer um, of uh, experience for the fan uh, towards Lamborghini as a brand, right? So, yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much this is like the, the whole concept context of Fast Forward. Yeah, that's amazing. I love the uh, the IRL component of it. I think what a lot of people see first when they look at this is the the interoperable cars, which I think is going to be you know uh, sort of the way of the future for for video games, particularly motorsport video games. But uh, the I really like the brand loyalty side of the project, where uh, you know people that engage with the with the the platform and uh, you know are, are active. Uh, that they get access to some of these 
really like, you know, as you say, like money can't buy type of experiences. Um, are they going to be like uh, strictly uh, available as rewards or are people going to be able to buy having like a Genesis capsule also be able to purchase a, a VIP ticket as well? Yeah, so uh, again, like this is the starting point, right? Um, and we are also open to, to listen to, to feedback and suggestions. But the starting, those will be like specifically uh, dedicated to uh, rewards. So we're not talking about buying those specific uh, experience at this moment, uh, but we are not uh, blocked to consider that for the future as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, I think before we really dig into this, because I think there's a lot to talk about here, I'd like to get a little bit of like a backstory on how this came to be, you know, like who approached Lamborghini or did Lamborghini approach you? Uh, you know, kind of get an origin story for, for where this all started. I think she Again, you know, uh, is the longest. <laughs> I can yeah, promote so her. What, what I can say is that um, Lamborghini has... Um, I, I would say uh, I don't have like the exact date when they started to, to do things on Web3 and exploring uh, the different possibilities in the space. But I would say Lamborghini was one of the first brands, uh, actual automotive brands to do um, uh, Web3 activation. So they are pretty early in, in the space. Um, there have been like experimenting like different kind of activations. So they they of course are talking with different players uh, in the in the market, um, but our relationship with them started like um, as I mentioned more than one year ago, uh, so like more than two years ago, um, because by the time um, we we are discussing with them like the, the different. works with iconic brands so um we can create this boutique led uh, experience to you like um to bring something that actually doesn't exist yet and of course adapt to this concept that you want to have like this digital central hub for immersive experiences and digital loyalty um, so, of course, like from this idea and from the relationship to becomes actually something like a product in the end, it takes time. So it's um, it's a kind of uh, relationship building uh, effort. So, for example, we had meetings. I remember uh, in 2022 uh, during NFT Paris, uh, Lamborghini was there. Um, we were there as well, uh, discussing with them like the next steps and so on, the ideas. Um, so again, like it was more like relationship, also the positioning, like to to be able to create this kind of uh, solution for a luxury brand and loved brand as Lamborghini. And I think also what helps a lot uh, is to have like uh, partners as, of course, Animoca brands, like the name Animoca brands helps a lot. And also Motorverse with this amazing project and uh, the uh, metadata, like the model of interoperable metadata that they have. Um, it helps a lot to become a no-brainer for Lamborghini to partner in this first drop uh, to be as this initial step for Fast Forward platform. Okay, cool. How uh, how much do you think the, uh, the meme when Lambo uh, contributed to them wanting to get involved with Web3? Were they aware of that? Like I mean, when... I, I cannot, I cannot <laughs> talk for Lamborghini, right? But uh -huh. we can presume um, that since the, the early days of Web3, they know it, right? Um, so, of course, like, it has impact uh, in the decisions. Um, in the early days, I would say, like, um, it's a huge brand. It's a, and it's a corporation, right? It's part of Volkswagen Group. So we need to be very uh, selective on the kind of things that you jump, like in terms of trend or not. So I think like in their approach was more to understand where the, the meme will uh, lead to. Mm -hmm. And of course, like there's, I think this is uh, something important to mention why they come with this project. 
you understand there is a culture behind it. Like when people post like when Lambo and it's because of course people want to get rich uh, enough to buy a Lambo. And this means that Lamborghini is the top of mind brand for crypto uh, audiences. And this is very important from Lamborghini. And that's why I think they have like this long-term vision. Um, and yeah, we are happy to, to help them to, to make this vision come live with Fast Forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, from just uh, like the, the culture of the, the Web3 culture and where it crosses over with automotive culture, it's, it's a perfect fit. Uh, so it's it's nice to see this all come together finally. Um, so you said this this isn't Lamborghini's first foray, foray into Web three, um, and I wasn't aware that they had done any other activations in the past. Uh, like, well, do you know when they got started in Web three roughly, and what they did? Yeah, so I know that they have some. So for example, the last edition. The, the last uh, Aventador uh, produced was paired with uh, a one-by-one one NFT. So a collectible, so it was like a car with NFT embedded to it. Um, they also had some other collections like uh, collectible of a um, physical piece um, that actually went to the, to the space and came back. So they had like this whole campaign about these specific uh, NFTs that was also attached to a physical collectible item. And of course they had a eight months campaign called Epic with it, um, focus around like digital collectibles as well. So I think the Epic Road Trip was the, the biggest campaign uh, for uh, automotive brand um, in the past two years, like it was, uh, in terms of marketing, it was pretty much successful, but again, like it was in, during the hype cycle of NFTs uh, that we can hopefully um, uh, join again, this kind of hype cycle. But I think it was an uh, important experiment first to onboard the early adopters for, for the Web3 community for Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. um, to have like kind of this these early adopters to help them to understand uh, what worked well, what didn't work, um, and gather this data to come up with this long term vision that we're uh, bringing now with fast forward. So I think like with all these experiences and mainly with um, Epic Road Trip, Lamborghini brought it to to create what we are helping to shape with fast forward. So for example, like we fast forward in our 3D wallets, all the Epic Road Trip photos will be able to see the assets there. Um, those assets will become like rare collectible items in the whole uh, fast forward narrative. So I think this is pretty much uh, great. And, and also like um, you had like different tiers for those assets and um, the, the top tiers will receive like a um, an airdrop of the the reward uh, that we are uh, dropping on Thursday. So, but of course, like to reward those uh, early adopters. But again, like to onboard uh, people to a new phase of Web3 from Lamborghini, and also, again, as I mentioned, not using Web3 and NFTs as a name, but more as using Web3 and NFTs as a mean to be, to achieve like this digital engagement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that approach. I mean, I think that so much of the NFT world has been really super speculative with not a lot of utility. And I like to see projects like this come out that really show all the different things, uh, the different experiences and features and everything that you can accomplish with on-chain assets. Um, so the uh, the first car, interoperable car that is going to be released is the Revolto. I'm curious how you guys landed on that as the the, the model that you wanted to uh, to launch first. Yeah, so maybe I can start uh, with the answer and you can, can complete later, but I think the the major like motivation was that Revolto is the flagship model uh, for Lamborghini. So uh, Lamborghini has these two model lines where basically like the cars that they are selling uh, regularly 
if you go there like you you can choose like uh you start with a urus uh, then you can go to the temerario the ones that they announced this year and then like the flagship model is the the reverto like it's the top of these three model lines of course you have some um uh, special editions and special models like for example the senza like they have like many other models but if you look to the three model lines the reverto is the is in the top so like again like it was a no-brainer to start with the reverto just because it's basically the genesis car from fast forward and those would be like the cars that will be um the initial cars for these whole experiences uh, that we are creating um so in the end of the day it was um uh, a natural uh, reasoning that we we decided together like to to come up with this car also because like it will be the very first interoperable super sports car as the website <laughs> is stating here mm -hmm. um so yeah maybe Ilya can uh, explain like how what this um means like for for everything that you are doing like in the model and the metadata standards and so on having the revert as the first car yeah uh Ilya, are you still there i think we were having some connection issues yeah yeah so i switched up my video let's see if that helps yeah that should probably help <laughs> it's an old trick um yeah, so we were actually discussing several options, you know, before uh, while planning go to market, um, and I think Lamborghini also had their preferences um, based on kind of the history of their lineup. Because there's obviously, you know, so much we can do uh, with existing cars, with the you know um, retro cars, and I'm sure. You know, we'll be working on more collections in the future <laughs> in both categories. Um, so Revelto obviously like is the hottest car right now uh, for Lamborghini and kind of the you know epitome of everything they've done, like in terms of design technology and of also the kind of the path to you know electric future. This is like the first hybrid. Um, and it looks amazing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think also the the important part is like we actually did a tour right to um, Lamborghini's head office in like in April uh, to get seal the deal, um, and we're actually you know planning to launch um, around April like in uh, a token in Dubai. Um, but we needed more time you know, to get things together. Um, but the, the the visit was amazing because we actually got to see the factory for Revelto and Urus, uh, kind of a you know white glove um, tour. Uh, I mean, when you see this site, it, it's like, like extremely impressive. Um, so we'll really hopefully, magic. yeah, we'll hopefully you know get some people to visit um one of those uh as part of this uh utility program um i know tiago said that uh, it's difficult but uh, uh i think like we can work it out yeah yeah it's really kind of one of a kind of um experience and um like when you see it you know it's obviously uh, like quite expensive but um the digital version is, is more accessible to more people oh, yeah. um so well you know it's something that people can actually see and you know almost like touch um uh in uh, in the place that where it's produced i think it was part of the kind of the rationale behind you know choosing the car that people can actually see and feel and um understand and relate to um um and like i said like we're we're thinking about other cars uh on our roadmap yeah I, maybe um, we'll ask you guys you know which one you want to bring next <laughs> yeah i definitely have my uh, my preferences i noticed that you guys uh are through the uh fast forward uh, platform there's going to be doing a uh like an easter egg hunt for parts to build a hurricane uh, stj 
Uh, so that's kind of like the next car that's going to be available within the, the platform. Is that right? Um, not exactly the next car available, but yes, like in the immersive experiences that we are bringing, this is a this is the example of the digital uh, rewards that we have in the platform. Mm -hmm. So the first digital rewards will be the the Huracan SDJ. Um, but yeah, this will part of will be part of a Easter egg uh, treasure hunt that we have in the immersive experiences. And of course, like to access this, you need the Genesis capsule that comes with the Revolto. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, uh, Ilya, to answer your question, I mean, the, the car that I would definitely like to see, and it's because I, I love 90s cars, would be the uh, the Lamborghini Diablo. Uh, so, yeah, when, when that launches, I'm definitely adding that to my collection. <laughs> it's a classic, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one that, like, you know, all us 90s, like, you know, kids that grew up in the 80s and 90s, you know, had pictures on our walls and was like the uh, the end-all, be-all of, of supercars at the time. All right, thanks for the Tiago. <laughs> I need to take some notes here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I next I want to talk a little bit about how interoperability works. Um, in a recent article that I posted on Driven Culture, the way I described it was because I always like to, you know, kind of liken it back to um, things that the average person may have experienced. Um, a lot of our audience is uh, very Web2 focused because we're trying to bring the traditional automotive enthusiast crowd into Web3. And so the way I described it was like if back in the day when you played Need for Speed, once you uh, finally acquired, you know, a, a Lamborghini Diablo SV, um, you know, that you actually own an instance of that vehicle that then you could use in all future versions of Need for Speed, but maybe even take it over and drive it in, uh, you know, um, Gran Turismo or Forza or, you know, um, Assetto Corsa. Uh, you know, uh, I think that's a good way to describe it for people that may not be too familiar with what type of um, advantages that, that on-chain assets have, but I'm curious if, to hear kind of like your perspective on the whole interoperable side of the the product. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And unfortunately, we don't have our uh, head of product uh, who would break it down much better than me <laughs> from a product point of view. Um, he's unfortunately quite sick. Um, um, it's like a, a cold weather going on in UK right now, but uh, I'll, I'll take a shot at it. Um, so yeah, at a concept level, uh, basically that's exactly what we want to do. And so interoperability means that you can take your car from one game to another, uh, whether it's you know the same um, franchise, like you said, Need for Speed, or let's say Torque Drift One and Torque Drift Two and Torque Drift Three. Um, but we obviously want to make them uh, playable across multiple games. That's kind of the big vision. Um, and so we start with our own games, like right? so you see Rev Racing and Torque Drift 2. Uh, so Rev Racing is the uh, sim racing game, right? They, um, based in browser, so it's fully on chain, uh, meaning all you know all the elements of the game are um, uh, powered by uh, blockchain. Uh, and Torque Drift 2 is a hybrid, um, so it's Web 2 and Web 3, um, and so you can play either uh, with the uh, NFTs, um, NFT representations of the cars, or with uh, Web2 versions. Right, and so so if you buy one um, NFT uh, for Avalti, it will be playable in both games. Uh, so obviously, it looks slightly different uh, because Top Drift 2 is the AAA quality, um, you know, Unreal Engine. So advanced mm -hmm. physics, uh, customization options, um, AAA graphics, and um, Rev Racing is uh, more sort of mid-core um, game, but it's getting better and better <laughs> day by day. So we're actually planning like a pretty significant upgrade for it. And, and um, uh, so we'll bring this to market very soon. And we have, you know, ob uh, so we have another game that's in the pipeline uh, for this when it goes live um, on Epic Store. So it's called Cosmic Royale. Uh, it's a kart racing multiplayer, so battle royale kart racing game. Uh, you might 
you know, some of you might have seen it. Uh, so it's built by uh, uh, our second studio called Eden Games. And so this is more kind of like a, you know, arcade cartoonish, um, but like very fun um, uh, racing game that uh, we actually launched in beta uh, a month ago. And this will be uh, fully launched on Epic Store uh, by end of this year. And so we obviously want to bring this Lamborghini NFTs in this game as well. And so they'll look uh, quite different from Torque Drift 2. Uh, but this is a way um, to kind of scale up and down uh, the representation of the cars based on our uh, interoperability standards uh, for digital vehicles that basically have certain principles according to which you know games should adapt um, the design right of the NFTs. Um, and this is kind of a way for us to show the rest of the you know gaming industry and web3 how this can be done across uh, different levels of fidelity uh, and mm -hmm. game genres and so this will hopefully you know inspire more third-party studios uh, that are outside of Motorverse ecosystem to you know, uh, implement this standards and bring uh, the sanities to their gaming experiences. So it can be, you know, racing games or open world games, um, or maybe just the, you know, virtual museums uh, or galleries. Um, so it doesn't really matter uh, so long as they adopt those standards and they're on, on chain, uh, they can, you know, bring revelators to their experiences. And obviously later on, when um, Web2 gaming projects um, like, um, you know, Fortnite or Roblox <laughs> finally decide to go on chain, they can always bring these cars um, as NFTs, you know, to, to, to their gaming experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's only a matter of time before uh, those games get on board, I'm sure. And by having the, uh, the Motiverse metadata standard, it'll make it a lot easier for uh, projects to tap into or games to tap into uh, existing mm -hmm. uh, collections of vehicles that are ready to, to integrate. So I think it's really yeah. a brilliant strategy. Uh, yeah, in yeah. fact, and something that we're going to be working with as well, we're going to be um, using the the uh, Motorverse metadata standards for our uh, RWA cars uh, as oh, we nice. release them. But uh, this uh this podcast isn't That's about awesome. us so <laughs> i won't uh, i won't <laughs> no no i actually i actually i was going to say cuz uh, tiago actually um you know haven't really been on on calls with you guys uh so maybe it's a good um you know kind of like a segue to uh, just bring break it down for him a little bit more because i think he'll be interested and in, maybe we can do something with you guys and lamborghini in the future mm -hmm. yeah definitely i mean um that's uh, one of the great parts about uh, you know what we're doing with driven culture is uh, connecting with with uh, awesome teams like yours. Uh, but yeah, I'll give a kind of a quick uh, overview of what we're doing, uh, not to hijack the conversation. But uh, so yeah, there's driven culture, and this is our media side where we're doing things like this podcast. Uh, we've got our newsletter and publication. Uh, we're going to be launching. Oh, we're still seeing Motiverse, uh, Oh, Alex. Yep. Let me. Uh, Switch it up. Let me go ahead and throw up some uh, some driven. There we go. Um, yeah. So uh, on the driven culture side, this is uh, our media company, and uh, so we've got a publication, newsletter, uh, podcast. We're going to be launching a YouTube series soon. Uh, working with uh, some big automotive YouTubers to to sort of. Um, introduce the traditional uh, automotive enthusiast crowd to uh, the Web3 side of things. Uh, but then we also have Driven Vehicles, which is uh, really kind of our, our flagship product that we're going to be launching uh, relatively soon, which is a, an RWA platform for uh, fractionalizing uh, the uh, ownership of ultra rare investment grade vehicles um we have focused pretty heavily on jdm cars since uh you know 90s jdm vehicles are sort of the uh um like the the classics of our generation the ones that we all grew up wanting you know having driven uh you know gtrs and uh uh gran turismo and everything um and you know they 
continue to increase in value to the point where, you know, like a, even a run of the mill R34 GTR will cost $150,000 minimum. You know, you get a, a, a special edition, um, like a, like a, um, M-Spec NUR can easily cost $300,000. It's definitely out of the reach of a lot of people. So what we're doing is fractionalizing the, uh, the ownership of these vehicles, uh, and then creating an experience around a, um, like a, basically a museum where people can come and see the, uh, community owned collection of vehicles. Those that hold a, uh, a share of the car will get a ton of benefits like being able to come in and take rides in it. Um, and, uh, be part of VIP events. They'll also work together as a community to come up with unique ways to monetize the vehicle. And then they will get a, uh, um, like a profit share on the revenue that that vehicle generates through different media, uh, that we produce with it. Um, and then going back to the, uh, interoperable side of things, um, the way that we are developing the, the shares of this is there going to be a version of an ERC 404. So if you own one full share of a vehicle, <clears throat> you also get it as an NFT and that NFT will be, uh, developed to the motorverse standards. So you can then go and, uh, uh as we, you know, release, let's say the different variants for the ver for different games in the motorverse, you can, uh, you know, connect your wallet and play with the car that you own a share of uh, in, in these various video games. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really great. Like can see like the rare vehicles that you are, you are dropping, like excited to see the first ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the very first car that we have right now is actually a, uh, 99 Ferrari 360 Modena that was owned by Paul Walker as part of his, uh, wow. his personal collection. Um, and uh, so what we are going to do with that once we uh, release the uh, the tokens for it is everybody who holds a share will be able to vote on the uh, basically the, the modification package that we do to it. We're going to modify it in a way that doesn't um, hurt the, the, the overall value of the car. So everything that is done to it can be undone, but basically give it a full like JDM makeover to make it like you know, something that uh, Paul Walker would have driven in the Fast and Furious franchise. And we'll take that out to car shows and, and events and use that to promote to motor, promote our project. And then after that, it'll probably some, be some sort of R34 GTR because that's really the, uh, you know, um, the, the white whale for JDM enthusiasts. Or, or Diablo. <laughs> or a Diablo. Hey, I mean, maybe we can do some sort of uh, partnership with Lamborghini and get a Diablo in. <laughs> that'd be amazing yeah um, yeah so i guess that's it for my uh my self-promotion <laughs> but um no, awesome. uh, thanks thanks man. yeah so let's see got a few more questions lined up for you guys uh, i wanted to kind of keep this to an hour or so um let's see i was gonna here. say uh uh mm -hmm. alex um so another good analogy uh, to interoperability uh that i found is um just imagine if you could you know drive your physical car in one city right and like if you're in london and you want to take your car you know to paris um and you're not allowed to drive your lambo in paris so that's kind of where we are in terms of gaming uh mm -hmm. today right because you can play in one game and you can never take it out of that game uh after you bought it so it's kind of the same same idea. And it actually letters up to the bigger kind of concept of uh, just openness and, you know, ultimately ownership that is native to Web3, right? Because for Web3, it's like you, you know, you own a Bitcoin, you should be able to take it from London to Paris and to New York and to other places. So those are physical worlds, right? And, um, uh, basically in digital world, it means you can move them across wallets, across different experiences, whether they're games or 
um, you know, trading platforms or, or what have you. Uh, so it's the same concept, right? You just, um, uh, whether it's, you know, Bitcoin or uh, Lamborghini or Revolta, like you should be able to take it anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we're enabling here. That's why, you know, it's so revolutionary because we're breaking down the boundaries of the silos, like across these virtual experiences, like games. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's definitely the way of the future. And uh, it's nice to finally see digital assets start to, you know, be used uh, in a way that that really makes sense and is scalable. Uh, and and the other thing I want to mention too is, uh, I don't know if you have it here on the website, um, but uh, you're going to be launching on the base network, which is uh, something I'm a big fan of and I think was a really smart move. I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about your decision to uh, launch this collection and experience on base. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, there are obviously you know quite a few options out there, um, and uh, we've experimented uh, with several uh, big chains like Polygon. Um, you know, we're looking into Solana. So both um, Rev Racing and Torque Drift Two are based on Polygon, um, but obviously you know there are like a lot of other interesting um, chains uh, that are available right now. So we looked at several and decided on base uh, just because it has kind of a lot of momentum behind it. Uh, um, it's, you know, the latest tech in terms of scalability, um, you know, cost and efficiency. Um, and also because uh, base, you know, is part of Coinbase, and Coinbase understands Web2 um, as well, not just Web3. So they have a really strong bridge, right? Um, so this is the so Coinbase, you know, for those who may be not familiar uh, from the, um, uh, you know, Web2 audience. <laughs> uh, not, not, let's say, non-Web3 audience. Uh, so Coinbase is the biggest um, exchange for um, crypto. Uh, so they have, I think, close to what, like 150, 200 million um, uh, uh, people with wallets. Uh, and so there's a lot of, you know, early stage kind of investors in crypto um, that have never played any on-chain games to so just, you know, dabble uh, by buying a little bit of Bitcoin and ETH and all the way to, yeah, you know, DGENs, obviously um meaning hardcore you know web3 audience so they probably have the biggest um range of adoption you know from uh early adopters to like early majority uh so that's why they are like an extremely interesting partner for us because they mm -hmm. can also advise us right how to talk to um, both worlds in the way that they can understand we can even see like in terms of their um Kind of communication you know brand guidelines uh they really try to be inclusive uh in terms of their language you know how they talk about their projects and partnerships very inclusive of um both web3 and web2 uh audiences which is which is great like we're learning a lot from them as well mm -hmm. yeah i think that's one of the biggest things they have going for them not only their existing user base uh, with Coinbase, but also they're really like laser focus on creating tools for developers to create uh, like easy onboarding for Web2 people, you know, so being able to um, abstract things like uh, like gas fees and, uh, and yep. transaction um, uh, approvals, let's say. Uh, and so people can use these apps without uh, having to really know much about web3 in the process all they have to do is have a wallet and uh you know and buy some some assets and they're good to go so that's a great point yeah actually tiago is closer to the dev side maybe he can <laughs> add to that uh with base yeah i mean um i mean like base was the the right choice for us to to start of course, like this is the this is a multi-chain project, right? But we wanted to to guarantee like um, 
that people would have like um, a easy experience like when they are going like to mint and also like to to offer um, already an existing ecosystem for them like to 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 make it um, to make it like more friendly for for the the audience right uh, but again like as Ilya said it's good that base has this approach of course in web3 but also like they're web2 friendly so I think that was the right choice as well um, we have like um, for example the Genesis pass that the Genesis capsule that we have um, this one um, is hosted on Lightlink, which is another partner offering gas less tr transactions. Uh, so again, like it's a multi-chain project, which is great uh, because we, like as I mentioned, we are using uh, for fast forward, we are using uh, Web3 as a mean, right, to achieve those objectives, uh, and it's great uh, to count with like partners like. Uh, base and like link working uh, together for this platform specifically but for the reveal to drop and for the cars itself i think was a uh, really great uh, decision for us like and that we agreed to go with base mm -hmm. so do you think that uh like with part of that decision to go with base was really to try and make this product launch appeal to web2 audience and not just be kind of stuck in the web three silo of, uh, you know, um, let's say, you know, traders and DGENs, but to kind of maybe break out to a, a wider audience. I mean, we need to consider that, uh, as I started like our conversation, Lamborghini is the, the top of mind brand for crypto audiences, but it's also maybe like the top of mind brand for some like uh, automotive uh, addicted, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, like you can, we can argue, we have like people who love Porsche, people who's, who loves Ferrari and so on, like and the other brands. But uh, if someone really loves Lamborghini, we need for those guys to have a Lamborghini asset. So yes, like we, we decided to go to make it friendly for web two audiences as well um and also because we we already knew that in the web three side we would be provided with a lot of support and an existing community from that sense but mm -hmm. yes it was to be friendly for both audiences yeah um what do you think are still some of the remaining hurdles for the web two side of the world to to come on board, especially for things like this, for like a automotive type of community. Um, you can start with that, Ilya, or should I start with my thoughts? <laughs> yeah, maybe you can start with like Lambo fans, right? So how do we? Um, yeah, we're also uh, trying so to onboard them. I mean, the the idea to make the experience uh, as seamless as possible, right? um so when I, I was seeing like a meme <laughs> about it like um we, we we tend to say like and uh, i think this is one of the biggest goals of web3 technologies to democratize uh, access um and traceability like for people to trust and to be transparent and so on um but sometimes like we have many different protocols and solutions and so on that doesn't uh relate and connect with each other right um so i think this is uh, like a general uh over looking to the market currently like we see that this is one of the major challenge and this is something that most of times doesn't uh, make this experience uh, as seamless as possible for web 2 audiences right so really like with um everything that we're doing with fast forward like we're pushing ourselves to to make sure that we are ticking the boxes like okay so this is this is okay for web3 communities and so on but this is also like a good like good experience for uh, a traditional guy like a more web2 audience um so again like with with base it helps it also helps like with lightning for the other assets and so on but in the end of the day, like when we see like some projects and talking to people, like why it's difficult for them like to 
to enter Web3, it's basically because you need to do a lot of steps <laughs> to basically enter Web3. You need to set up a wallet and then your wallet doesn't work. You need to set another wallet and then you need to buy like this token, this cryptocurrency. So it's several steps. So we need to like just to shorten the path. And I think <laughs> this will be like the direction that we, we all want to go. Yeah, I definitely agree. And, and that's what we're doing on Fast Forward, right? For this mint. Um, and we're also enabling credit card uh, purchases, right? So to make it easier for people without wallets, um, Web3 mm -hmm. wallets to actually buy Lamborghinis. And that was actually the kind of the mandate, I think, from Lamborghini side uh, also, because, you know, Lamborghini, they're not Web3 Web native. Um, so they told us that they want to make sure that they're, you know, real world fans <laughs> with actual Lamborghinis in their garages or, you know, just fans who aspire to get one at some mm -hmm. point um, can get into the action, right? Um, and that's like part of the plan, uh, kind of to have an easy way in, um, as easy as possible, right? Yeah. At this point, uh, for people without Web3 knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so we, you know, can't wait for um, your community, uh, Rex, to try it out on November 7th. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. <laughs> um, and then uh, I guess question I have, I'm curious what the uh, connection with Rarible is. Is this going to be like the uh, official secondary market partner? Yeah, so Rarible is basically our partner for the proprietary marketplace that we have on Fast Forward. So you you have your 3D, wa 3D wallet with your car. If you want to list this car or if you want to, to bid in some car, uh, you have a proprietary marketplace uh, inside Fast Forward. Of course, you can trade in other marketplaces as well, um, but Rarible has a really good solution. It's called Rarible X where you can like fully customize um, your own marketplace and also like it work as a launch pad. And we're, we're happy to be working with, with Rarible to make it possible. Um, but again, like it, it makes sense for us to have a proprietary marketplace um, because like, again, like we, we can go back to the discussion about Web2 and Web3 natives, right? Um, so we know that Web3 native audience will mostly like to trade in the marketplace of their preference. But when you go like to Web2 audiences, probably they will prefer to, to stay on their Lamborghini brands and pro proprietary solutions. So mm -hmm. we are working with these two ways of doing it and Rarible is supporting us on that. Yeah, I think that's really smart to sort of uh, consolidate all of the user experience into one uh one location for those that uh you know don't know where they would go to list a uh something on the secondary market or purchase it on the secondary market for that matter so yeah it seems like in a lot of ways this is really set up to be uh i would say pretty successful for web2 oriented people to sort of have their first uh, Web3 experience, uh, especially, you know, if it's a brand they know and love, like, like Lamborghini, uh, you know, it makes it extremely easy. So uh, I really do hope that this starts to penetrate through to that, uh, you know, the traditional automotive enthusiast crowd. And that's something that we're trying to help with and, and accomplish here on our end with Driven um, is to introduce this to, you know, that, that traditional automotive space through uh, like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, where there's a lot of traditional car content. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can continue to to push that ball forward for you guys, and sure. uh, and bring in some some new users. Sounds amazing. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, let's see. Go through my notes here. See so if there's any other questions I wanted to throw in before we wrap this up. Um, since we are live on X, if you have any questions at the very end, I'd like to take a couple of questions from the audience. Um, so go ahead and drop those in the comments, and I will pick a couple to uh, to ask to Ilya and Tiago. Um, but uh, let's see. Um, I guess kind of 
to, to close it out, this is something that we ask all of our guests, uh, whether or not you're a car person yourself, I like to get a feel for people's car history. So uh, whoever wants to take the mic first on this, I want you to tell me your first car, your last car or current car, the best car you've owned, the worst car you've owned, and the weirdest car that you've owned. Wow, that's <laughs> that's a loaded question. Uh, came on prepared for that one, but um, <laughs> it usually so my... catches people off guard. <laughs> that's why it's fun. Yeah, um, I actually don't have a car right now because I'm in the big city again, um, and but I keep getting that question a lot. Uh, so I think my probably so my first car was actually um, an interesting one, which is a Samsung car, which you guys probably never heard about uh it was in korea um but it is actually a rebranded nissan um uh i'm actually forgetting what it is which actual original nissan model it is but it, it was called sm3 like something sm3 um that was my first car <laughs> you can look yeah, it I'm, up. Gonna have, I'm gonna have to look that up now it's from samsung <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's Nissan and Renault, Korea. they don't have like official um, presence in Korea. Uh, and I, I, I lived in Korea for six years. I worked at Samsung. That was my first <laughs> workplace. Um, and as you can imagine, Samsung owns, you know, one third of Korea. <laughs> so they, they, they produce cars, which is basically under Nissan Renault license. Um, mm -hmm. So it's basically like a rebranded uh, lineup for Korean market. Um, they also make, you know, build buildings and uh, run amusement parks and um, shopping centers, uh, not just TVs and, and phones, <laughs> just mm -hmm. uh, like a fun fact. Um, and uh, so the second car was also, was um, uh, Honda Civic. Um, okay. Forgetting the year now. Yeah, this, this is it. Um, <laughs> and my future car probably like if i had to pick one now it would be probably a, a tesla um the test driven quite a lot of them uh when i was in uh, in the bay area and uh, became like, a pretty big fan yeah teslas are nice cars <laughs> It's yeah, funny, but, I, where, you know, I, where I, I live, like, I am the, right near a Tesla plant and a Samsung plant. So got both of mm, those out here. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the ones that can, I can't afford, like obviously, you know, if like I a model S resources, I would get a <laughs> Revolta. <Alta. laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 100%. For sure. Tiago? Yeah. So, like on my side, uh, so I'm originally from Brazil. Um, mm -hmm. My first car, like I got when I was 18 years old, and then actually I got the car. Like my father was using this car, and I just got when he he got a new one, and it was kind of uh, like it's good that you asked because it was a, a good memory. It was uh, not sure if it if you have like in all over the world, probably not but i think you have it in the us as well it was a chevrolet like a, a gm a mm -hmm. monza 1990 1998 i think it's monza called here as well um, yeah, I'm not familiar with the monza brand. yeah so i'm just trying to look for the right name in like in the us it's m-o-n-z-a mm -hmm. It's kind of like a squared sedan, like, um, not sure if you found it here, if you found there. What year did you say it was? Uh, M-O-N-Z-A. Mm -hmm. And what year? Uh, 1998. 98. Yeah. Yeah, I have never heard of that. It must be rebadged or re yeah. to something else. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Found it? Yeah, oh, it took me to Facebook Marketplace, and it's like, uh, no, yeah. you can't. So this is uh, actually like, uh, I would say in the early uh, 2000s was a very famous car, like popular car in Brazil. 
Mm -hmm. And then my, my father got this car, like it was part of the family and so on. So it was my first car. Um, then after that, like, um, like in the Uber time, so I'm 28 years old. Right. Uh, so then like, I just realized that would be easier for me, like to, to ride share, uh, and so on. So it was actually my, my only car that I had. <laughs> no, really? because, yeah then i moved to europe like uh living in paris as well like doesn't make sense for me right now to have a car like walking like with metro and so on so but i can answer your question like for me like for the next car and mm -hmm. if i would buy a new car like if it makes sense for me i hope it's a revolt <laughs> <Right>? yeah <laughs> i can definitely understand why you guys would be leaning yeah. towards that it's a pretty incredible yeah. machine <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I like the Urus as well, um, and yeah, um, there are some old models from Lambo. Like uh, the past years, I have been like deep into like the the legacy models from Lamborghini as well. We like mm -hmm. the Comanche and so on, but more like as a collector's car. Um, but yeah, like for a new one, the super sport cars, of course, it would make sense for me to have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, at this point, oh, yeah, to. <laughs> in the future, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish you luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we do have a question from the audience. Uh, somebody's asking if there will be a token for the game in which the Revuelto NFT is going to be integrated. So I, I assume they mean like a uh, like a fungible token. Well, yeah, so uh, so we have a fungible token now, which is Rev, Rev token, mm -hmm. right? Which is native to Waterverse ecosystem. Um, and they're obviously, you know, a different layer of um, uh, sort of rewards and engagement, like from, for our community around the token. Uh, if you guys want to learn more, uh, so the best way is to go to modiverse.com um the rev uh section um yeah. right right at the top there so uh basically it says uh talks more about the utility of the token and where to get it and there's a link to light paper so you can learn more um essentially one of the ways mm -hmm. to get in is um you know to get some rev and um join our staking program uh and we you know you can accumulate points, so Motiverse points, um, based on you know how much and how long you stake, and then get additional benefits, like for instance, uh, access to allow list, you know, for our upcoming upcoming Revo Revo but also, you know, we'll continue that program for all the future memes as well, and there's some additional you know perks like access to our partner mints and some of the community events like real life and virtual and so on mm -hmm. um so yeah please check it out awesome um speaking of community events you guys ever planning on doing anything here in north america yeah so mm -hmm. like, what you say like when you have the the super trophy events next year for sure we have like something like to to onboard to bring some community members there but yeah not sure about uh, something specifically related to motorverse Ilya, if you have mm -hmm. something planned yeah i mean um we we are kind of working on our next year plan so this year i would say um probably the biggest um well, in terms of geographic footprint, probably the biggest activation was around MotoGP. Um, I'm actually, I can't remember if there was a MotoGP race in, in the States this year. Um, but if there's one, <laughs> it will be definitely there because we go yeah. to each one of them. Um, and then, so we usually, uh, we like to go to like big um, industry events, whether it's gaming or, you know, Web3. Um, so maybe like NFT NYC could be a good, um, you know, target for us for next year, uh, and maybe even um, GDC, right? The Game Developer Conference, uh, yeah. which is annual in San Francisco. So I, I would like to go there, um, but we just need to kind of understand um, uh, 
uh, if it's, uh, you know, we can partner up maybe with some other animal projects um, uh, to be there together. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think like Web3 involvement in uh, traditional gaming uh, conferences is growing like year by year. Like I keep hearing there's some like interesting side events happening um, uh, at uh, GDC as well. So um, we'll, we'll try to make our way and, you know, be there next year. Usually it's held around March, right? So we'll plan for it. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, I hope to see you guys uh, have a presence here in North America, in my home country here well, soon. And uh, if you ever yeah, yeah. Well, need anybody to, also, to help you, help rep you at these events, you know, just count me in. <laughs> yeah. Also, obviously, like, would like to be at some, um, you know, high profile uh, automotive events. Uh, so if you guys have any recommendations, mm -hmm. let us know. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, when you build your museum, we'll be there. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're hoping some point in 2025 to, uh, to open up so maybe our public you can help showroom. You build it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. See. Well, we plan on having a, a whole bunch of, uh, like different experiences in there. So sim racing set up, uh, nice. and, um, you know, so, uh, lots of opportunities to do some really cool, innovative things. Yeah. Let's talk. All right. Awesome. Well, I think that pretty much covers it. We're just a little over an hour right now. So thanks for joining. Um, let me go ahead and throw this up to kind of end it off. But uh, yeah, so the mint of the Digital Revuelto for Fast Forward goes live on Thursday the 7th. Um, and uh, anything you guys want to, any details you want to provide to our viewers on that? Um, well, so, I mean, um, like all the details are basically in this infographics, all the key details, right? So it's easy to share and kind of digest. So the total supply, so the size of the collection is, uh, 3630. Um, um, so that's the, you know, the, we decided to land, um, in the 3000 range and the 63, uh, it's not an odd number. It's uh, actually the year of founding of Lamborghini. 1963. Mm. I knew there was going to be some sort of, uh, meaning uh yes. in that number <laughs> nice. yeah a little alpha um uh easter egg and um so the the mean price uh so that's the price of the you know per per asset uh so one nft is uh, 0.065 and so it'll be tied to the you know current rate of ethereum for the fiat um purchases uh, so this will be real time uh, so you can maybe check, you know, what the price is right now. So it's not going to move too much, <laughs> I think, from what it is today. And then November 7th is the in day. So this is Thursday. Hopefully, you know, all the um, all the hype around the elections will uh, come down by then. So let's see. Uh, and then, so the key partners are Base, uh, Multiverse, you know, Forbes 3, like Link, Rarible. So those are like our really good partners on the tech side or partnership side or media side um, that um, we're working closely together to bring this to market. So this is a big collaboration with Mockiverse, if you guys want to check out, um, uh, you know, what's happening there. It's quite exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, so there'll be three stages. Uh, we have Elite, which is a guaranteed phase. So first come, first serve. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. So guaranteed is, um, you know, for, for our partners and, you know, uh, community members. Um, so it's a guaranteed spot uh, to mint the um, Lamborghini. And mm -hmm. so Revlist is the uh, first count for serve, right? So um, it's more open to public. Um, and then the public sale is the public phase. Uh, which, you know, uh, anyone can come in and um, buy it. Um, uh, so there's no cap on how many you can buy. Uh, so depending if, you know, we get to that stage, uh, it'll be open to anyone uh, in the market. And then uh, after some time, we'll enable trading. Um, and then there will be also a reveal phase. Um, so after the mint, uh, we will... Um, there will be a kind of a pause and then the reveal will happen in a few days of the actual car you know that you purchased um uh, will update you know further 
when this is going to happen, but uh, it won't be too long uh, before we can look at your shiny <laughs> frame rate. Yeah. Uh, maybe, Tiago, do you want to talk a little bit about the traits? Because um, uh, I think we haven't covered that. Yeah, so have a sneak peek uh, here in the in the image, but basically um, each one of the cars will have a paint uh, library or not, um, a decal on the rims and brake caliper. So we're talking about five traits. Uh, each asset will be exclusive, like it will be unique. So if you have one combination, no other person will have the same combination as you. Of course, we have some uh, rarity on that. Um, like, for example, the golden paint will be a rare, rare item. We have exclusive traits for the uh, holders of the uh, the top tier epic, epic road trip collection as well. Um, so yeah, like those are uh, some of the the alpha for the for the traits. But it's basically five traits, and each asset is unique. Nice, nice. Well, I think it's going to be really exciting, and it uh, looks like there's a lot of uh, anticipation and, and hype around it. So, I wish you guys luck on the mint on November. I'm, uh, you know, curious to see how long that lasts because <laughs> I can see it getting snatched up pretty quickly. Yeah, and actually, uh, just reminded me, uh, you guys have a pre-sale link, right? Mm -hmm. So, Rex, maybe again, um, to share a bit more about it. Uh, yeah, so uh, for our community members and particularly those that have been engaging heavily with our content over the last week during our Driven Lambo week last week, uh, we will be giving out a link to uh, pre-sale where you'll be getting a discount on the uh, mint of one of these digital revueltos. Um, is there a limit to how many people, uh, how many NFTs people can mint in that uh that pre-sale link? Uh, Tiago, do you remember the top of your head? Um, I think it's written in the link uh, specifically. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, those are limited spots, right? Mm -hmm. So also like for your community, it's probably first come, first serve, like as yeah, soon as sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Well, uh, I'll be sending that link out soon to uh, our community members that have been uh, active and engaging with us over the, the last week. So congratulations to all of you who uh, have been hanging out with us. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, anything you guys want to close off with before we call it a day here? No, all good. Thanks for hosting us. Um, like we really enjoyed it. I think it's really like helpful for us to kind of hear perspective, you know, from outside of Web three. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. like we work with Lambo and you know have our, our past, um, um, you know, professional experiences and Web two companies. But I think it's a great reality check of like how uh, people are thinking about you know getting into Web three and how to evaluate the benefits. Uh, um, mm -hmm. You know, so it's really helpful. Uh, so we definitely want to stay in touch and kind of get more feedback from your community, Rex. Uh, like it's super valuable. Mm -hmm. And of course, this I can definitely see the touch points for collaborations for us in the future. Yeah. So thanks absolutely. for inviting us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having us, Rex. Uh, looking forward to other conversations like that. And thanks for your support. Yeah, yeah of course. So I'm Rex super excited about it. So I'm pretty uh, interested in what we're uh, launching, like the, mm -hmm. the fractional ownership, really great project. Thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely be in touch, uh, keep you posted on all of that. And, uh, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for us to work together here in the future. Yeah. Thanks, Rex. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Cheers. All right. Bye. Appreciate okay. it. Cheers. Have a great one.